We have, in the past, covered the astonishing mega-metropolis that has been unearthed using ground-penetrating radar beneath a nearly impenetrable rainforest that now engulfs the area. A super-civilization that not only supports our posit of there once being a number of lost civilizations that have flourished and often seemingly met an untimely demise here on our planet, but has been estimated to have been home to more than 10 million sites such as Tikal, once believed to be independent separate clusters of past impressive and as yet unexplained block buildings, through the use of ground-penetrating radar, have been proven beyond doubt to have once been part of the same super-settlement that spanned nearly the entire rainforest that the site is now home to. Yet we have also covered the incredible ancient stone and earthworks that can be found dotting many areas of the Amazonian rainforest that again are indicative of a past super-civilization. Yet conveniently, since the discovery of Guatemala's super-city, funding for such penetrative studies elsewhere of said areas has dried up. The question is why? Why are we witnessing an active attempt to conceal these ruins from the world? We feel the evidence to suggest so is now beginning to mount. However, where mainstream academia won't step, many others are fortunately willing to pick up the slack. And this particular area of interest is of no exception. And as usual, the investigative researchers have turned up some astonishing characteristics of the Amazonian rainforest, features which are indicative of another super-settlement, possibly of a similar size to that of the ancient sites found within Guatemala. A group of scientists and researchers, after investigating the area, have put forward what has been pinned as the Amazonian Stonehenge. According to said researchers, they found evidence that a, quote, highly advanced ancient civilization once existed in Brazil, and although they have dated the ruins as having been built 500 years before the European colonization of the Americas began, we feel that the evidence to suggest that they were in reality far before this date will soon be realized, and that these people who once inhabited the Brazilian Amazon were possibly creating an impressive arrangement of immense towering granite blocks. As such, scientists today speculate that these massive stones were like so many other sites we have covered in the past, attributed as that of an ancient astronomical observatory. The structure consists of 27 blocks of granite, each up to 4 meters tall, standing upright in a circle measuring over 30 meters in diameter. In other words, possibly more than a thousand years ago, an ancient civilization of native peoples were flourishing in the area. According to the New York Times, radiocarbon tests and site measurements during the winter solstice shed light on the ancient civilization's abilities that inhabited the Amazon. From this, new archaeologists have realized that the people who lived in the area developed a more advanced civilization than previously thought. Who built the Amazon Stonehenge? When did they build it? Is there a lost super-settlement hidden beneath the Amazonian rainforest as that of the Guatemala rainforest? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have long conjectured that many ancient ruins found throughout the world are not what they seem, attributed to groups within known and permitted history. We feel, however, that the evidence to suggest that they were, in fact, relics of an as-yet unearthed advanced civilization is now overwhelming. Many sites we cover escape modern understanding or explanation. Gigantic multi-ton megaliths, often somehow mysteriously quarried and transported from quarry sites sometimes hundreds of miles away from where we find them today. Such realities are undeniable and the lack of any explanation as to how our more primitive ancient ancestors accomplished such tasks, we feel, remains elusive due to said site's origins actually being a far more capable, far more progressive, now lost civilization, who were clearly once capable of such incredible feats. 
However, although many sites are often attributed to what we perceive were mere re-inhabitants and the archaeological footprint that they left behind, excavated and permitted to be studied in depth, pinned as the creators of said sites. However, the relic we are focusing on in the following video, an ancient artifact left by those who possibly created the site itself. Majorca, a favorite with holidaymakers, yet alas, what many do not pursue while on the island is the inexplicable stone megaliths which litter its tropical shores. Academically attested as a 3,200-year-old relic, we feel, however, that the sword, although clearly of a remarkable preservation, is in fact far older than this, and those who have investigated the site and said relic have concluded that the only possible origin of this incredible object was that of a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Now known as the Taliot Sword, it is an astonishing ancient weapon, once somehow made far within antiquity, created to incredibly high standards, and we feel the reason the sword has survived so long is merely testament to the quality of the sword and indeed the past abilities of its creator. Recently discovered by a team of experts digging at the archaeological site known as Talio de Seralda se Abelis, found within Puig Poyent, a municipality on Mallorca. The site is comprised of several stone megaliths, which are claimed to date back anywhere from 1000 to 6000 BC. We however hypothesize that the sword is far older than even these unusually generous academically dated estimates. The sword was found near one of the stone megaliths, known locally as a taliot, hence the sword's name. Built by the mysterious Taliotic culture, which we feel is the name given to lost civilization that many funded individuals continue to try and dismiss, claiming that it was located within permitted timelines. Labeled by some as the Spanish Excalibur, it is undoubtedly an incredible artifact and one which sheds precious light upon the capabilities of a now lost civilization. Work is now underway at the site and is pegged to continue for the next few decades. Initially explored by historian and archaeologist Guillem Bordoy in the 1950s, it was in mid-September, as the researchers were readying the museum at the site, that the team found the sword. Who made the Taliot sword? How old are the megalithic sites upon the island of Majorca? Are we looking at an artifact left by a now lost civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have, in the past, covered numerous seemingly impossible ancient feats of ancient engineering found throughout modern-day Japan. Polygonal stonework of gigantic proportions, ancient forts and temples, which we have previously distinguished, were constructed upon far older and now inexplicably mysterious masonry techniques, the most abundant of which we have come to know as polygonal. Yet, alas, due to the explanation as to how this was achieved remains elusive, thus the site is dismissed and deliberately overlooked. As such, the absence of any logical explanation as to how said sites came into being, or even how this stonework was once achieved, means that not only are these sites suppressed from mainstream attention, but the seemingly impossible features still in existence are instead of being exposed and admitted as unexplainable accomplishments, thus allowing those with a critical capacity to pursue said origins, we feel, are instead avoided, compelling proofs of our posit of their having once been advanced, now yet lost civilizations, which once flourished and often seemingly suddenly vanished, have indeed been and gone on our planet. The suppression of this truth gives motive to academia who attempt to cover up such realities. Yet, regardless of the defining purpose for this conspiracy, whether to avoid mass panic or not, we feel, it is not a valid enough excuse for this suppression, and in our opinion, we feel, regardless of public reaction, we all deserve to be presented with the true reality of these ancient sites, and indeed, a true account of our history. Tucked away within rural Japan is a megalith 
known as Ichi no Hoden. At first glance, this particular megalith looks as though it is floating in mid-air. The reason for this is due to the civilization's abrupt departure. As such, the stone has not been completely liberated from the bedrock it is still attached to. Clearly, at the final stage of excavation, the stone is literally hanging by a thread. And due to the location of the excavation, and the fact that the stone itself has protected its base from erosion, the megalith has remained attached to this small seam of rock for untold millennia. The defining reason for why we attribute the stone to a now lost civilization is its sheer size, measuring an impressive 5.7 by 6.4 by 7.2 meters. The stone also weighs an estimated 500 tons, meaning that the techniques, or indeed the technology used to cut and transport the stone, remains an unexplainable feat of ancient engineering. Largely dismissed by academics the world over, these gigantic stones, however, are a legacy that due to their immense size, is likely to still be present here on our planet, far after our own civilization has been and gone. Additionally, just like the many other sites which we have successfully identified within Japan, as the work of a now lost civilization, a temple was later built at the site. And although attributed to a civilization within permitted timelines, the megalith has been believed to be holy and has been venerated since ancient times. According to mainstream study, which although not publicized, were literally forced upon academic institutions as they continue to attempt to appear transparent, all the while actively avoiding the task of explaining not only who and when this stone was cut by, but how this ancient civilization was intended to transport said stones to their final locations. The official version is, predictably, a claim that the rock was intended to be a tomb. However, just as we would have expected, there is no scientific information as to who quarried the stone, or indeed what intentions they had for its eventual purpose. Who cut the Ishinohoden megalith? How did ancient civilizations move such gigantic stones, sometimes thousands of miles? We find the Ichinohoden megalith highly compelling.